Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, The Detective, bringing you the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Tonight's picture is from 1956, Crime Against Joe, starring John Bromfield, Julie London, and Henry Calvin. It's about a starving artist still living at home with mom who goes on a drinking binge during which a local nightclub singer is found murdered. He of course becomes the prime suspect and proving his innocence and finding the real killer all hinges on finding a 10 year old missing class pin from the graduating class of 1945. Now this picture, uh, along with the actors that I just mentioned, it also features a small role being played by Patricia Blair. Uh, she's playing the role of Christy, who is essentially a sleepwalking teenager. Now Patricia Blair, she was in a handful of films, but she was mostly a television actress. She appeared in a number of episodes of various TV series but the two she's best remembered for, she had a recurring role as Lou Mallory in the TV series The Rifleman during its 1962 and 1963 seasons. But now far and away, her biggest was she had a regular role as wife Rebecca Boone in the TV series Daniel Boone, which aired on NBC from 1964 to 1970. So, from 1956, Crime Against Joe. Let's roll the picture. Is it art? Art? It's not even fit to hang in a bar room. I wish I looked as good. And I did once. What's wrong with it? I don't know, Nora. I don't know. I can see it in my head, but it doesn't come out of the canvas. I want it to have warmth, humor, and wisdom, and innocence. A girl you'd want to know. Have you ever known a girl like that, Joe? No, I didn't think so. She wouldn't be quite human, you know. You're idealizing, Joe. About women or art? For you, is there any difference? Everything has to be perfect or you destroy it. Oh, Nora, you make me sound like a case. The army changed you, Joe. You went away a boy and came back a man. Wish I knew what kind of man. I think I'll get drunk. You want a drink? All it ever did for your father was make him a cynic. And three drinks later, he became sentimental. Before the night was out, he was a great philosopher. I think I just black out. I'm going out to find somebody to drink with me. Find a nice girl, Joe. A nice, imperfect human type of girl. 
and bring her home to meet Mother. You're a wise woman, Nora. But not innocent. I'll dig out your father's hangover remedy. If you can't talk, just point. Slacks? Are you a nice girl, Slacks? Well, either way, I wouldn't want it known. Well, it's obvious to the naked eye that you're a woman nobly planned. But are you a girl I can take home to Mother? Well, not unless Mother's sober. You better have some black coffee, Joe. I have merely fortified myself to search for a good woman. If she exists. Don't be cynical. You shouldn't be driving either. Oh. You have had another fight with Red. Same old one. Send a cab over the desert drive-in. Uh, hey, hello, hello? Sam, if Red doesn't have a fare, would you tell him it's Joe Manning? Yeah, thanks. You're next. Thanks. I was just thinking, Joe, how nice does this girl have to be? How nice do they come? Who knows? Maybe I'm eligible after all. Where do we sign up? Campaign headquarters will be the Pango Pango. You want me, Joe? Mr. Redwaller, may I present Miss Slack's band? We've met. Is that all you wanted, Joe? Oh. I can see you children are coming to the parting of the ways. Yep. From now on, it'll be slacks and Joe. It's like ham and eggs and scotch and soda and coffee and... What a world. My best pal steals my best gal. Well, you boys got your memories, Red. Yeah. Come on, best pal. Let's go to Pango Pango. I'll follow out in your car, Joe. It isn't safe to walk at night. Good night, slacks. Now, a little 
find something for yourself, Red. Why didn't you tell me you were going to tie one on? Might have taken the night off. It's a solitary journey, old gray-haired buddy. Joe Manning in search of his soul. Yeah, he ought to be in search of a job. Uh-oh. Now you've drawn first blood. Fight isn't over. Good night, buddy. F-16. For a man to love, he's got to be great at staying out late. I'm looking for a man to love. I'm looking for a man to. What are you drinking, Joe? Strong waters, Harry. Evil doesn't looking matter. I'm for a man to kiss. Don't want caviar or a Cadillac car. I'm looking for a man to love. If you see someone who could be my baby, just tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. I'm a woman who won't need much talking to sell me. I'm looking for a man to love me. I'm looking for a man to kiss. I don't want to miss a moment of bliss. I'm looking for a man to hold. If you see someone who could be my baby, just tell me. Don't want to miss a moment of bliss. I'm looking for a man. Please help me find that man to love me. Young lady, may I say that you sing with the voice of a nightcap? Harry, introduce me to this lovely gentleman. Joe Manning, Irene Crescent. Hi, Joe. Miss Crescent, are you a nice girl? Of course, dear. I'm nice to all my friends. Well, I'm looking for a girl. Well, I've got eyes for you, too, honey. Girl I can walk hand in hand with. I'm touched by the sordidness of the world. Go walk by yourself, Joe. You're drunk. He's a sentimental drunk, Harry. Leave him alone or I'll tell your wife. I'm going to take you home to meet my mother. The last show is over at 1 o'clock, Joey. Does mother stay up that late? I'm warning you, Joe. Harry's the jealous type, aren't you, Harry? I'm going to take you away from all this. This... Noisy room, this dingy, stinking joint by the side of the road. I want to talk to you, Joe, outside. Come on. So long, Joey. It was a beautiful romance while it lasted. Miss Crescent, you are not a nice girl. And I'm glad I found out in time. Someday you'll regret me. Come on. <laughs> Harry, there are no good women left in the world.
I guess he kind of bushwhacked you, Joe. meeting in the moonlight. Must have been written in the stars. I'm Joe Manning. I'm a strolling philosopher. Tell me, are you a nice girl? You know, you shouldn't be out here on the street like this at night. It's not safe for little girls. Oh. Sleeping princess. Come on, sleeping princess. Come on. You gotta go back to bed. Come on. Mighty pretty. You know, I like to paint you. I'm a good painter. I'm a wonderful painter. You're awful pretty. Is this where you live? Come on. Yes, what is it, please? I'm sorry to disturb you so late. I should think you would be. Well, I found this. Come on, sleeping. Come on. I found this young lady here. Christine, what are you doing out Shh, there? Shh, be quiet. She's asleep. Well, bring her in quickly. Now, wait a minute. She live here? Don't be idiotic. She's my daughter. I'm Philip Rowan. Oh, it's very embarrassing. Could have been much worse than embarrassing. Did you know that a young lady was attacked a few nights ago? Yes, yes, I read about it. Christine and I are very grateful to you, young man. If you'll wait a moment, I'll repay you for your kindness. Two o'clock. Got this one good. She's dead. Looks like she put up quite a battle. Yeah, but she lost it. This guy must be a psycho. Who found her? Phone call. Somebody didn't want any credit. I picked this up. Looks like she ripped it off him. A high school pin. How do you like that? You can be just as crazy with an education. yourself a night, didn't you? Oh, Nora, you ought to be in bed. How are you going to support me in my idleness if you don't get your rest? A lot of people in town would love to make idleness pay as well as you do. There was a time, Nora. How about those two years? I was a patron of the arts. Mm -hmm. 
And I was a lazy no account. I lay around while my mother worked. You know, your father didn't start having recriminations until the next morning. He had an honest job. Why are you so stiff-necked about it, Joe? If people knew how well I prefer to be remembered as a bum, Ma. Ooh. You know, I think somebody poked me on the jaw. Say, didn't I take my car? Well, you left it, huh? It came back with a girl. Ooh. Night was full of girls. Irene, Christine, and Slacks. Slacks. She said you stood her up. Yeah. I do have a hazy recollection of making a date to meet her at the Pango Pango. You should have, Joe. She's a nice girl. A nice and perfect human type girl? Oh, I, I don't think it worked. Well, you should have been around when she was talking about you, Joe. You're a great man. What year did you graduate from high school? 45. Why? 1945. Do you own a school pin? Everybody that graduated owned a class pin. Where's yours? Oh, look, sir. I'm slightly hung over this morning. Do you mind getting to the point? Where do you work? Right here. I paint. Do you always paint half-naked women? I painted quite a few. Why? Can you make a living at it? Anybody in town can tell you that I'm subsidized by my hard-working mother. She thinks I have talent. Most people think I'm a bum. Anything else? Who smeared the red paint on her? I did. She didn't come out the way I saw her. In a moment of bad temper, I destroyed her. I'm like that. I get mad easy. Don't take it out of me, Manning. I'm just a public servant. Where did you do your drinking last night? Oh, I remember hitting a lot of places. The Pango Pango? Yeah. Yeah, that's the last place I remember. Why? Somebody murdered Irene Crescent last night. Do you remember that? Oh, Why don't you get something on me before you start playing in the newspapers? We've got it. Sit down. This yours? No. The class of 45. That's when you graduated. How can you tell it isn't yours? They all look alike. Where did you get it? The guy who killed Irene Crescent was wearing it. Well, that lets me out. I haven't seen my class pit since I was in the Army. I certainly wasn't wearing it last night. But you don't know where yours is. I suppose it's at home someplace. Mm-hmm. Do you have any idea what time you got to the Pango Pango? Maybe midnight, a little later. Where'd you go then? I went home. What time did you get there? Probably a little after two. That's two hours. Well, I walked. I didn't have my car. Manning, you're in trouble. That girl was killed between 1.30 and 2. And you better be able to count for that period. Two. I remember the town clock striking, too. But... Who was I? I know. I was talking to a man, Rowan, at... named Rowan, at his home. Philip Rowan. Well, go ahead. Go get him down here. Mr. Rowan, please. Hello, Philip. Glad to see you. Sorry to cause such a bother. Oh, no bother at all, Roy. How have you been? Putting on weight again. How in the world do you do it? Why, hard work, of course. Well, I'll have to cut out this loafing. Oh, I uh, believe you know young Manning here. Yeah? Oh, no, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Manning, is it? That's right, Mr. Rowan. I guess I forgot to introduce myself last night. 
last night. Yeah, I uh, called at your house. Well, there was someone around soliciting. Was that you? What time was that, Mr. Rowan? Oh, 7, 7.30. Oh, no, it, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. At my house? It must be some mistake, young man. But I brought your daughter home. At 2 a.m.? My daughter was sound asleep at that hour, weren't you? You know I found your daughter on the street and I brought her I'm home. I'm sure I don't know what the young man is talking about. I didn't think so. I'm sorry to inconvenience you this way. Phil, well, I'll, uh, I'll owe you a drink for it. Make it at my house. But not at 2 a.m. I'll do just that. I'll tell Christine you're coming. Right. Why is he lying like that? Is he lying, Manning? All right, miss. Now, Miss Wayne, I want you to take a good look at this man. Is he the one who attacked you? Well, it, it was awful dark, and, and he hit me from behind. I, I can't be sure, but... Well, it could have been him. I've seen him hanging around the drive in plenty, staring at the girls. Thank you, Miss Wayne, that's all. You know this man? Speak up. Sure, I know him. Was he at the Pango Pango last night? Yeah, about 1 a.m. He tried to pick Irene up. Are you going to say something, Manny? Ah, uh, what good would it do? Did he make a date for later with this woman? No, I broke it up. The boss don't like that kind of stuff. Tell him the rest, Harry. He threatened her. He said she'd regret it someday. I didn't mean it that way, and you know it. Sit down. That's all. You're in trouble enough now, Manning. Well, unless the law's been changed, I'm entitled to counsel. You may need it. All right, Manning. Are you ready to make a statement? You're darn right I am. Every one of them lied. Get him out of here. I've got two daughters of my own. Book him on suspicion of murder. All right, let's go, Manning. as though Joe killed that girl. I'm not in possession of any of the facts. And of course, we lawyers can't permit personal feelings to... Luther, you grew up with Joe. You went to school together. He's going to need you in his corner. Will you defend him? Well, I have an awfully full calendar. Let me see. I'm in court tomorrow. Then there's the Anderson suit, Agnew and Appleby. Then I have to go to Phoenix. Mrs. Manning, in all fairness to Joe, I feel he'd be better off with someone who can devote full time. A case as serious as this demands careful preparation. Yes, I realize that. I didn't realize you were so busy. Naturally, when his trial comes up, I'll do anything I can. Thank you, Luther. It's good to know you can count on old friends. There are times, Mrs. Manning, when the best I can say about my job is that someone has to do it. I'm sure you're interested in seeing justice done. Naturally. And you wouldn't want to convict an innocent man. Mrs. Manning, your son's innocence or guilt will be deduced by a fair and impartial court. Then he should be properly defended. I've been to three lawyers so far today. And not one of them can find time to handle Joe's case. Mrs. Manning, two women have been brutally attacked in the streets. One of them murdered. It's only natural that public temper should be short. 
You mean that Joe is being convicted before he ever gets into court? Of course not. And if you're unable to employ adequate counsel, the court will assign a public defender. As far as this office is concerned, we're overlooking nothing to get at the truth. For example, your son is being examined by a psychiatrist right now. Are you implying that Joe is insane? The very nature of these crimes indicate a uh, psychoneurotic mind. And as your son's army record shows, he was hospitalized for, uh, what is that phrase, uh, battle fatigue. Battle fatigue. It's rather an exact term. Can you tell me what form yours took, Joe? My nerves were shut. I had nightmares. We'd been under fire for 11 days. My whole company was wiped out except for myself and two others. Maybe it was too much for my sensitive artistic temperament. Were you an artist before you were inducted? Oh, no. I, I started that in the hospital. It was part of my therapy. And you devoted full time to it after your discharge? Well, I didn't get a job, if that's what you mean. I let my mother support me until I started to sell my work. She had the odd notion I had talent. She'd develop it. Mothers are like that. Did you ever feel just a little guilty for letting your mother work to support you? I suppose so, sometimes. At least when I was discouraged about my work. Uh-huh. Joe, tell me about this picture that you smeared with red paint. Oh, you got a good one there, Doc. I pay women, that means that I attack them on the street. Do you always destroy what doesn't measure up to your standards? Sometimes. Say, you got a cigarette? Sure. Thanks. Why'd you use red paint to smear it? Happened to be the color of my brush. Does it make you think of blood? Made me think of red paint. Yeah. Now about the girl in the picture. Did you use a model? No. Maybe a little bit of several girls I know. What's your attitude on girls, Joe? I think they're here to stay. Any unhappy romances? Well, I proposed to a girl once, but she turned me down. She said there was too great a difference between our ages. I was seven, she was 25. Maybe that gave me a complex? Now, let's go back to these periods of depression and frustration. What periods of depression and frustration? That started your drinking, Joe. To relieve the tension? You know what happens to you when you drink? Sure. I get cynical, sentimental, and philosophical by stages. It's a family trait. My father was the same way. Did you have a blackout at any oh, time? Oh, look, Doc, I went out on a simple, ordinary binge. Everybody does this from one time to another. I went out to bring a nice girl home to meet my mother. It was a gag. Was it? Did you find a nice girl? They were all nice. Wait. But not nice enough for your standards, is that right? I suppose so. And whenever someone or something doesn't meet your standards, you destroy it, don't you? Well, present symptoms. Defendant is subject to despondency, overtly aggressive, creates unrealistic goals, resulting in frustration, suffers from nightmares. Present mental status, above normal intelligence, memory intact except when under influence of alcohol, repressed hostility toward opposite sex for not supporting fantasies concerning them. Oh, that's very good. Yes. Very good, doctor. Quite comprehensive. Now then. In your opinion, could he have been insane at the time of the crime? I was under the impression he denied responsibility. But on the basis of the evidence... Well, it was a very brief examination, Mr. Kelly. Although I believe it's safe to say he is medically sane now. Then we've got him. Oh, miss, you were waiting to see me? Yes, sir. I know something about Joe Manning. You uh, work at the drive-in, don't you? Yes, sir. Well, doctor, perhaps this young lady can give us some added assistance. What is your name, miss? Miss Lax. I mean, Francis, Francis Bennett. This is Dr. Tatro, Miss Bennett. How do you do? How do you do? Now, what is it you know about Joe Manning? Well, we had sort of a date last night. I was to meet him at the Pango Pango after I got off work. When I got there, he was gone. What time was this? About 1.30. I was just driving away when, when I saw the girl, the one that was killed. Oh, Irene Crescent. Yes, she was getting into a car with... With a man. A man? You mean Joe Manning? No, sir. No, it wasn't Joe. It was somebody else. They drove off together. Young woman, do you know what you're saying? It wasn't Joe. 
I didn't know the man, but it wasn't Joe. You'll have to walk a few days, Manny. Your car's been impounded. What for? They're running some tests, just in case that alibi doesn't stand up. Joe. I was sort of expecting a lynching party. Take it easy, kid. Don't think about it now, Joe. Tomorrow... They thought I killed that girl. Came in one after another and lied. Took me right in the face and lied. Let's go home. Yeah, everybody has something to cover up, Joe. You got to expect that. They were all scared and they were just covering up for themselves. Now, come on, kid, get in. If you don't, I'll put you on waiting time. Cap four. Union and seven. Where's my graduation pin? Why, well, I don't know exactly. I haven't seen it for a long time. You must have lost it probably years ago. Cap 17, Union Station. Well, what do you know? I forgot to put the flag down. Did you look for it, Nora? Joe, how many people know where their high school pin is after 10 years? I tried that on the police. It didn't work. It doesn't matter now. They know you didn't. If my alibi stands up, I don't even know what my alibi is. Didn't they tell you? It's slacks. She saw that dame driving off with some guy. Did Slacks get a look at him? Nobody she knew. Nora, I'll be back later, huh? Come on, Red, take me to the drive-in, huh? Whatever you say. Hello again. Now... Why is he calling his mom by her name, Nora? Yeah, I didn't call my mom Ellie. <laughs> you know, you know, that is never explained or answered as to why he's calling his mom by her name. <laughs> now, the nightclub here in the picture, the Pango Pango, you know, it's got that tiki Polynesian decor to it. You know, back then in the 50s, Polynesian-themed bars and restaurants, they were all the rage back then, uh, and certainly in the run-up to Hawaii becoming an American state in 1959. In fact, we had, uh, it was in Columbus, uh, a local restaurant, it was called the Kahiki, uh, again, a Polynesian restaurant. Uh, it was quite popular uh, for decades. You know, it didn't go out of business till maybe about 20 years ago, uh, w w which is a long time. You know, it had some staying power to it. Now, John Bromfield, uh, he was born. He's the one playing Joe. John Bromfield was born in South Bend, Indiana. He went to college at St. Mary's College of California, and that is in the Bay Area of California. Began his acting at La Jolla Playhouse in San Diego. But then, shortly, World War II came along, and he served in the Navy during the war. Now, he did a, a fair number of films, mostly noirs and westerns. And within that, he mostly had support roles. Now, two of his noirs worth mentioning, he was in 1948's Sorry Wrong Number. He was in that with Barbara Stanwyck and Burt Lancaster. And he was in 1949's Rope of Sand. I brought you that one sometime back. That one, again, had Burt Lancaster and Corinne Calve, who... Bromfield was married to at the time. Uh, he and Calve were married from 1948 to 1954. So during Rope of Sand, they were working together as husband and wife during that picture. He was in a number of other noirs as well. Um, also did a lot of TV acting, mostly episodes in TV westerns, uh, in the mid-1950s. 
Now, his big note in history, uh, another fad of the 50s was 3D movies. 3D movies were a huge popular fad back then. And he starred in 1955's Revenge of the Creature, which was a 3D movie. And that was the sequel to Creature from the Black Lagoon, which was also a 3D movie. So having appeared in Revenge, Revenge was the only 3D sequel to an original that was also in 3D. It was the only time that was ever done in Hollywood history. <laughs> well, let's get back to Crime Against Joe. Can I see it for a moment? Yeah. Slacks, I swear I'm going to have you say it. Sure. Say Slacks. Say, what the devil is your name? You know, all the years I've known you, I never heard you call anything but Slacks. Well, I've almost forgotten myself. I think it's Francis. Francis. Thanks, buddy. For what? Telling them what I saw? Few people told things they didn't see. They give you a bad time? Well, they didn't like them. Tell me, did you get a good look at the man? Well, I know it wasn't you. I didn't pay much attention, just a man and a woman getting into the car. Well, how about the car? Do you know what make it was? No, I didn't notice. Think slacks. Was it a station wagon, a coupe, a sedan? Was it light, dark, two-tone, old Joe, note? I just didn't notice. It wasn't you, and that's all I know. Well, how about the time? About 1.30. You ask as many questions as the district attorney. Look, Slacks, they had a good case against me. They haven't given up. Your testimony shot a hole in it. They can discredit that. I'll Do be they think I lied? I don't know. Did you? Why, Slacks? Why? Oh, Smitty, that's the cop that comes in here. Said they had enough evidence to hang you. And I knew it wasn't you, Joe. I just knew it. Then you didn't see anything? I drove out there to meet you, and somebody said you'd been in a fight and left. Who told you that? Oh, I don't know. Some cowboy, I guess. Cowboy. I waited in the car a few minutes, and I took the car over to your mother's and had a cup of coffee with her. What time was it then? 1.15. Then you were with Nora during the time the girl was killed? I guess so. And she knows you lied. No wonder she acted so funny. How do you like that? Even my own mother thinks I'd kill that girl. She doesn't, Joe. That's a terrible thing to say. I want a few minutes with you, Mr. Ron. May I come in? Yes, sir. Of course. Come in. Um, this way, please. Perhaps I should congratulate you on your release. I hope it doesn't upset you. Not at all. I'm relieved. Are you? Then why don't you tell the truth to D.A.? My dear Manning, I had my own position to consider. I think you will agree that the circumstances of our first meeting were rather awkward for me. Maybe my perspective is a little off. You see, I was in an awkward spot myself. Well, now you're out of it. No harm has been done. Sit down. I'm out only because the case against me developed a leak. If they can plug that, I'll be arrested again. You've got to go back to the DA. I'm sorry, but I don't agree with you. As long as you're free, I see no reason for myself or my family to be involved in a sordid affair. Look, Mr. Roy, you're playing with my life. So your daughter's a sleepwalker. That's no disgrace. I think I'm the best judge of that, Manning. My daughter is not strong. I can only repeat, you're free now. When the time comes when my testimony is essential for your safety, that will be the time to call on me. But I call on you once before. With such mysterious goings on. What are you two plotting? Oh, I'm sorry. I have butted in, haven't I? This is Mr. Manning, my dear. My daughter, Christine. Yes, I know. Have we met before, Mr. Manning? In a way, yes. Mr. Manning called one evening. I, I don't believe you were here. Yes, you were asleep. Oh, good heavens, you weren't peering into my bedroom, were you? No, you were sleepwalking. I found you on the street and I brought you home. I was sleepwalking. 
On the street? Father? We'll discuss it later, my dear. There was nothing, really. At least that accounts for why I didn't remember if I was asleep. Please excuse me. That was a contemptible thing to do. I know it you was. You forfeited any right you might have had. Be assured you'll get no help from me. Now, if you'll excuse me, you can find your own way out. Come on in. Joe. Are you mad at me, Joe? If it weren't for you, Slacks, I'd still be in jail. As long as I'm out, I can fight. I want to help. Okay. This is my high school yearbook. It has the names and pictures of everyone I graduated with. Oh, by the way, all of them had class pins, too. Say, that's an idea. How many were there? 87. Oh. Oh, but I've weeded most of them out. Now, there were 45 girls. We can forget them. Six were killed in the service, or still in, and nine moved away years ago. That still leaves 27. But I've accounted for most of them. Look, here. Here's Eddie Boyle, for instance. He works for the railroad. He was in Phoenix. And the Sims, he's still in traction from a car accident. Well, and so on down the line here. The four at the bottom of the possibilities. Harry Dorn. He's a bartender at the Pango Pango, isn't he? Yeah. And Luther Woods, he's an attorney now. Oh, look at here. It's Ralph Corey. He's running for councilman now. He should have used this picture for his political poster. Had more hair then. Over here, wait a minute. It's George Niles. Oh, I know him. He comes in the drive-in all the time. Yeah. Joe, these men are all solid, important people. Yeah, I know. Do you want to see what they voted me? Wait a minute. Here. Most likely to succeed. <laughs> That's a lie. You will yet, Joe. Sure. I've already got bigger headlines than any of them. Do you really think one of those four men killed that girl? Yes. If the pin means anything. Everyone will be at the homecoming dance on Friday, won't they? That's right. And the one who can't produce a pin. But what if they've all lost their pins? Well, I'm back to four slots. Joe. You don't have until Friday night. That detective knows I lied. He thinks I'm in love with you. Slacks. Could you stall him off for a day or two? Secretary didn't tell me you were waiting, Joe. I took the liberty as an old classmate to barge in, Luther. I suppose your mother told you why I couldn't take your case. Yeah. Well, I'm happy there was no need to. Where's your high school graduation pin, Luther? I dare say it's at home somewhere. Well, I have the names of four people here. Yours and three others. One of you killed that girl. Can I see your pin? So you've finally gone to work, Joe, as a detective. You know, you ought to take a look at your old high school yearbook, Luther. I like what they said about you in there. Luther Woods, ask him the time and he'll tell you in a few thousand words. You haven't changed, have you? You're wrong, Joe. I'll give you a one-word answer. No, absolutely no. If the police ask to see my pen, I have it. But until they do, I'm not going to become involved, however indirectly, in your troubles. Same old Luther. No in two dozen words. is the day. Everybody vote. That's all Ralph Corey asks. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Next Tuesday's the day. Everybody vote. That's all Ralph Corey asks. Step right up and listen to your next councilman, Ralph Corey. Congratulations, Corey. Keep up the good work. Hello, Ralph. Say, Ralph, you still got your high school graduation pin? Uh, not now, Joe. I can't be seen talking to you. Did you lose it, maybe? No, it's home in a drawer. Now, 
Get out of here, Joe. You're costing me votes. I'll stop by your house tonight and see for myself. For Pete's sake, Joe, do you realize what that could do to me politically? Yeah. Yeah, tell the voters that you don't attack women on the street. I tried to warn you, Joe. Manning, there's nothing I can do for you. I advise you to get a lawyer. Why, if a member of my own family committed these horrible crimes, I couldn't defend them. I stand for law and order. Oh, right. Ralph, save it for the platform. You shouldn't be running around loose. Why, in the old days, they'd have had you strung up by now. What's he doing out anyway? Run him out of town. <laughs> How goes the battle, kid? They got me on the run, Red. I guess it's just like you say. Everybody's got something to hide. You're finding that out, eh? Anything I can do? Well, I need a car. Police have got mine. My heap's in the alley. Just remember, you're not driving a Sherman tank now. I felt safer when I was. Thanks, partner. You say it, everything's straight now with slacks. Sure, you know how women are. They gotta get married. On what, I keep asking him? Those tips you get at the drive-in? I was looking through an old high school yearbook last night. I saw your picture, George. I've changed a lot since then. I'll be glad to see your ranch before it's sold. You got left, Harry. Nerve. What have you got? Class pin, maybe? Now, you listen to me, Joe Manning. My husband had nothing to do with that girl. Sure. I've got a sore jaw to prove it. You were drunk, Joe. I was sober when you lied to the DA. You get out of here, Joe. You just get out. We don't have to put up with your slurs. Harry can produce his pin anytime he has to. Glad to hear that, Ruth. For your sake. Your pin. Where is it, Harry? There isn't much left, is there? If you told me what you're looking for, I'd help you. It's a pretty locket. How much is it? You don't want that. It's awfully nice. You don't want anything but my high school pin. You thought I didn't know why you came out here. I was kind of expecting Joe. He was pretty drunk that night, but uh, I figured he'd remember in time. You're the cowboy that saw that fight. I picked Joe up. I was going to drive him home, but uh, he walked away. I sure wish I had now. Joe didn't kill that girl, George. But he can't prove it unless he's got a pin. I'll let you have mine for a hundred dollars. He'd be in the clear then. Where is it? Don't you wish you knew. Joe would go right to the police and tell them it was his. And what would poor old George do with no pin? Joe doesn't want your pin, George. Oh, yes, he does. He can't fool me. He was always a smart one in school. But I'm on to him now. I'm keeping my pin. You, uh, go buy one from somebody else. Maybe somebody bought it at the auction. You ought to make sure you still have it. You don't think I got a pin, do you? You think I killed that girl? Of course I don't, George. You want them to put me in jail? They took my ranch. They took everything. And I want them to come and take me, too. Well, that's just plain silly, George. You're not going to do it. You're not going to leave here.
slack. Are you hurt? Oh, oh Joe, he tried to run over me. Well, you're all right now, honey. Come on. Joe, he killed Irene Crescent, didn't he? Well, there's no proof of it. But I'd like to see what Dr. Tetro could do with George. Come on. Thanks for the use of your car, Red. Your girl Slacks here was a great help. What happened? Where you two been all evening? You got fresh with my girl. I'm not your... It wasn't Joe. Let him talk for himself. Well, if I have to say it, buddy, it isn't worth saying. Come on, get in. I'll take the both of you home. Thanks, Red. Why don't you just move in with me? I brought your car back, Manny. Fine. What are you waiting for now, Tip? No, but I got one for you. It won't be long now. You know, it's a shame that nice little car hop has to get bounced with a perjury charge. Nice to see you again. I wanted to thank you for bringing me home the other night. Well, that was your lucky night. I'd already killed one woman, so you were safe with me. I'm terribly sorry. If I'd known at the time, I would have insisted that my father clear you. By the time I learned, you'd been released. Well, I'm afraid I won't be out for long unless your dad goes to the DA. But he said you had an alibi. The alibi was a phony. The police know that. As soon as they can prove it, Then well. I'll tell them myself. Tell them what? You saw me in your dreams? You were asleep. If you want to help me, make your father testify. I will, Joe. Is that right, Joe? He was only trying to protect me, but it isn't that important. I promise you he'll do it. Could we talk about this later? I'm late now for a doctor's appointment. Well, how about tonight, Miss Rowan? Christy. Eight o'clock? Oh, I think it might be better if I met you somewhere. Yeah, uh, say, do you know where Waller's cab office is? No, but I'll find it. Till eight, Joe. Thanks. Lipstick, maybe, but not blood. I believe you. Good. If you'd ever once said you hadn't killed that girl, I'd have believed that, too. I've never been a doting mother, Joe. Would you have been happier if I'd said... My boy is perfect. He can do no wrong. Yeah, I guess I would have been kind of foolish. But I'm still a mother. And right or wrong, I'll fight anybody for you. I guess you gave Luther Woods a fast round, huh? It's one way to find out who your friends are. Yeah. Hey, you want to give me a lift for this? You going to the homecoming dance? Are you kidding? They'd tear my head off and give it away for a door prize. Now I got a date with Christine Rowan. A business date? Yeah. I think she may be able to prod her old man into telling the DA I was there that night. She's a nice girl, too. My dear, no matter what the psychiatrist has told you, it can't be so drastic. After all, sleepwalking isn't exactly an incurable disease. I don't want to talk about it. But we've always talked, you and I. Haven't we always been friends? I don't want a friend. I want a father. You talk as though I'd failed you in some way. No, father. Not in the smallest detail. And that's the whole trouble. We go every place together, do everything together. You monopolize me. 
It's because I love you very, very much, my dear. Because you love feminine companionship, but you don't want any emotional entanglement. So I'm the perfect substitute. Christine. You don't think of me as a daughter. I'm your companion. This is the most ridiculous drivel I've ever listened to. Do you realize why I sent you to Dr. Tetro? To find out why I walked in my sleep. Well, he told me to escape you. Do you know why I walked in the street? Because I read about that man who attacked the car hops and I was attracted to him. Subconsciously, he was a symbol of the kind of relationship I can never have as long as you keep me a prisoner. My dear child, I can't begin to count the number of young men that have called on you. Oh, they come. One. And you drive them away by being so charming, so intelligent, so everything. You make them feel stupid and clumsy. They can't compete with you. I've always attempted to be pleasant to everyone who comes in this house. To all of them, Father? Even Joe Manning? Have you been seeing Manning? I ran into him in front of Dr. Tetro's office. Are you afraid of him? Is that why you lied? Whatever I've done was for your best interest. To protect me? Well, you needn't bother any longer. Sleepwalking isn't an incurable disease. I promised Joe you'd call the district attorney. Do you realize what you're saying? I've already made a statement. I can't admit perjury. I have a certain standing, reputation in this community. You'd let a man hang to save your reputation? That's utter nonsense. Manning is not in jeopardy. Now, let's not talk about it anymore. I suggest that you get a good night's rest and we'll discuss this in the morning when you're more rational. I won't be here in the morning. I'm going away where I can live by myself and live normally. I'm beginning to think that you're in greater need of a psychiatrist than I realized. Hi, Red. Hi. Hey, I told my date to meet me here, okay? Why not? Look, I got out of line last night. Slacks told me what happened. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, forget it. Why didn't you go to the cops about Niles? I don't think George Niles is the man. Look at the way he took after Slacks. I tell you, he's getting simple-minded. Well, it only proves what you said, Red. Everybody's got something to hide. Citizen's cabin. Just a minute. Sounds like your date. Yeah. Hello, Christine. What happened? Yeah. Yeah, I see. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for trying. Good night. Rowan girl? Yeah. I was counting on her to go to the old man, take him to the DA for me. Didn't work. Well, stop, kid. I'm sure sorry. What are you gonna do now? Well, I had an idea on the way down here. Are you gonna go to the homecoming dance? You gotta make a buck. Why? I'm just about down to my last bullet. This doesn't work. This guy Holland is going to be a pretty happy man. Citizens can. What are you doing here? Slacks. I didn't know you for a moment. Gee, you look wonderful all dressed up like that. Oh, Joe, this is no place for you. Among all my old friends. I had a date with a new girl tonight. She stood me up. I think she even left town. Christy Rowan, huh? I only met her three times when she was asleep. That leaves you and Red. Red? How long have you known Red? Ever since I fell in love with you, why do you think I wouldn't marry him? According to the old redhead, he was the one that didn't want to get married. Well, now you know the truth. 
I tried everything but the direct approach. Is that what you like for me? Dance with me? Right here. Oh, Joe, I'm scared. Somebody might see you. Let's get away from here. Not yet. We were dancing. I've got one last angle to try. What is it? The guy that attacked those girls didn't get that way overnight. He's been pulling stunts like this all along. They could have started right here when he was going to school. You mean there might be something in the school files? The accumulated records of Luther, Harry, George Niles, and Ralph Corey are down on the vault. If those files show that any one of them ever had a quirk, well, we found something. Well, there's no signs of a struggle. The window is open from the inside. Is there any reason for her to run away? Sergeant, my daughter is gone. I don't see that her motives for going have any significance. It all helps. She'd been to see the doctor this afternoon. She came home in an overwrought, nearly hysterical condition. For her own sake, I locked her bedroom door. About 8 o'clock, I took a glass of milk up to mm -hmm. her. Is there a man involved? Well, certainly not. As a matter of fact, she did phone a man. Uh, I just happened to pick up the extension. You know who he is? Yes, it was Joe Manning. You knew she was going out with Manning, yet you waited nearly four hours to report it? I knew nothing of the kind. She talked about leaving town. I didn't believe she'd really do it. But there was a bus at 11 o'clock. Do you really think she's on that bus, Mr. Rowan? If I thought she was in the slightest danger with Manning. He's suspected of attacking two women already. If he had anything like that in mind, he would have done it that night she was sleepwalking. What night was that? I don't remember. What difference does it make? He said he found it out of the murder. Was there another time? Christine has walked in her sleep many times. On the street? No. Just that one time. Probably filed under the year. Look for 1945. Over here, Joe. Yeah. See, Corey. Dorn, Harry, Woods, Niles. Now, have you seen anything? Anything at all? Sing out. Quietly. Hey, Joe. straight A's and Curry won the public speaking contest. It's about all you can say for any of you. Let me take a look. I could have sworn there'd be something here. Was there anyone else in your class? Somebody you might have forgotten about? Well, if there had been, it'd be in the yearbook. That. Joe? Yeah? I didn't know Red went to school here. Oh, yeah, yeah, he came here, but he, he never finished school. Why? I don't know. He dropped out for some reason. He didn't graduate. Is that why his picture isn't in the yearbook? Yeah, he was in my class, but he didn't get a graduating pen. Maybe that's what happened to yours. I've known the old redhead for years. We were kids together. Let me see this. He didn't drop out of school. He was kicked out. Remanded to juvenile court. I always thought it was for joyriding in somebody's car. Why was it? There was a girl with him. Joe. The night before those girls were attacked, Red and I had a quarrel. Both times. Yeah. And he always wanted you to marry him and you wouldn't. Come on, let's get out of here. Watch Joe, he's here.
one chance. You go back out the way we came. I'll make him follow me through this door. No. He has a gun. He'll kill you. It's the only way. Go. to get you, Joe. It just happened that way. But I gotta do it now. I gotta kill you, Joe. <laughs> Joe, I didn't mean to hurt those girls. I didn't hardly know them. You understand, don't you, Joe? You remember how it was in school? All the girls were after you. Old Red was just a big joke. A lot of laughs. You get tired of being laughed at, Joe! I fixed one of them then. Slacks was the only one who never laughed at me. But she wouldn't marry me, Joe. You hear that, Joe? She wouldn't marry me because of you! You had all the girls you wanted, Joe. You couldn't let me have slacks. <laughs> I fixed you once, buddy. I put your pin beside that girl. Do you hear that, partner? Old gray-haired friend! You're no friend of mine. I don't owe you nothing. You're all out of luck, Joe! Sorry it had to be you. Joe, I didn't mean to. There's something wrong with me, Joe. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it to you. I lived through it. Be sorry for Irene Crescent. Goodbye, buddy. We had a great case built against you, Manning. But we were wrong. And I personally want to say that I'm... I know. You're sorry. Welcome back. Now, he is still calling his mom by her name, Nora. That is never explained. <laughs> but we see that the real killer was Red the cab driver. It was him the whole time. Now, Julie London, and she's the one playing slacks here, she was born in Santa Rosa, California, but grew up in San Bernardino, California. Uh, she had a very prolific acting and singing career. Uh, she made her film debut when even she was still even in high school, appeared in 1944's Nabonga. It, it was something of a monster horror movie. Uh, her films were mostly westerns and noirs. Now, of her noirs, she was in 1951's The Fat Man, 1956's The Great Man, 1958's Voice in the Mirror, and 1960's The Third Voice. 
<laughs> she certainly had a penchant for appearing in movies that were similarly titled. <laughs> now, for her TV acting, you know, she appeared in a, a number of episodes of TV series from the mid-50s to the early 70s. But the only series in which she was a member of the regular cast was Emergency. It aired from 1972 to 1978, and in that, she had the role of nurse Dixie McCall. Now, she also had a, a very robust singing career, uh, recorded a number of albums, mostly, uh, how, do I, how do I want to say this? Uh, she would do covers of pop songs and jazz standards but do them in a very sultry torch style. You know, I just love torch songs and torch jazz. I mean, I just love that style. And that was her forte. In fact, two of her pop songs that she covered, she covered The Doors Light My Fire and also Yummy, Yummy, Yummy by The Ohio Express. Yeah. Yummy, 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 I got love in my tummy. <laughs> Remember that one? Yeah, she found a way to cover those songs in, in a very sultry, like I say, kind of a torch style. It, funny thing about uh, Ohio Express, I just mentioned them, you know, they were the original artists of Yummy, Yummy, Yummy. The Ohio Express was from Mansfield, uh, Mansfield, Ohio. It's only about eight to 10 miles from Mrs. Detective's hometown of Crestline. So I just wanted to mention that because I like to get things in from Ohio, you know, things that involve other Ohio natives. Now, while she had a very robust acting and singing career, that now brings us to Alika Lewis. And she was the one that played Irene, uh, the nightclub singer who was killed. For Alika Lewis, Tonight's picture was her only screen appearance. And as best as my investigations could find, she never recorded a music album either. So we certainly have uh, two opposite ends of the candle burning on this one. Now remember, if you like this picture, you know, and you want to see more like it, click on the subscribe button. You'll be notified of future releases up in the notification bell. And you can always just type Full Moon Matinee in the search bar and you can find all of the prior releases. And as always, I thank you for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time. Thank you.